Hi, I've got a real interesting bit of kit for you today. This is a UNI-T function generator, but it's not just a UNI-T function generator. It's a $5,700 US UNI-T function generator. And if that's got scratch in your head, because you're used to thinking about UNI-T is making like low cost, like multimeters like this, um, well, I've done a video, I'll link it in if you haven't seen it, uh, uh, talking about the rise of UNI-T and now the, how they're getting into higher end stuff. And this is one of their new um, high end bits of kit, which as far as I know, is only matched by one other model on the market, which is the uh, Siglent SDG 6000 series uh, generator, or Siglent also do a 7000 series generator which is above that, but that Siglent is only a two channel model. This is a four channel function gen 500 megahertz. As far as I'm aware, this is the only four channel 500 megahertz, but eh, put a little asterisk next to that uh, 500 megahertz there. We'll see some limitations, but still, this is a real interesting bit of kit. Let's check out what a almost 6,000 US dollar function gen has to offer. So obviously what you're paying for here is the 500 megahertz uh, bandwidth, available only on uh, channels 1 and 2 by the way, and 2.5 gig samples uh, per second sampling rate. So this is like really remarkable. Most function gens like top out at like, you know, 100 meg or something, you know, in that order. This is 500 meg. Now, of course, you can get much higher frequency like this, but they're not usually not function generators. They're like RF signal generators, which are a different beast entirely designed for a whole different thing. But this is a normal function gen, and actually this isn't the top range model. So this model is the UTG 9504T, 500 megahertz, but they do actually make a 600 megahertz model of this, the 9604T, and that one's around 6200 US bucks. Whoa. Unfortunately, this video could be an hour long if I went through every single possible option and compared this with uh, the matching uh, Siglent uh, SDG 6000. So please forgive me if I um, skip a few things because these function gens do a lot of stuff and they have many different uh, sort of quirks and limitations depending on what you're doing. And in this particular case, which channels you're using because you don't get the 500 megs on all four channels, unfortunately. But on this model, you do get the 500 meg bandwidth and 2.5 gig samples per second on both channels one and channel two. Channels three and four here, though, are limited to 200 megahertz max bandwidth with 625 meg samples uh, sample rate there. But curiously, these two outputs here are 16 bit, whereas the 500 meg ones here are only 14 bit. Now, the 600 megahertz model, the uh, 9604T model, this has full 16 bits on these channels as well as 16 bit on these ones. So, and for what, 500 bucks difference? I know that's a lot of money, but when you're talking about a $6,000 function gen, eh, I'd be springing for the 600 megahertz model to get your 16 bit on here. So that's a bit disappointing. I don't know why they differentiate there, but you know, the ADC is going to cost more. Anyway, it's got all your requisite stuff here you'd expect on any function gen. Uh, the user interface here, I rather like it actually. Um, so we can select any one of our four channels here and then we've got all of the different uh, functions here. Continue, uh, that should be continuous. First spelling mistake, apparently people on the forum have actually found like half a dozen spelling mistakes in the user interface, not a good look. And then each channel can have modulate, for example, we can get up to uh, 256 symbol uh, quadrature amplitude modulation here, plus all the other requisite modulations here. It's got absolutely everything. Then of course you can do uh, sweeps and you can do bursts and you can do these on any of the uh, four channels here. As you can see, it's got a built-in uh, frequency counter that goes up to 800 megs apparently. And if we go into utility over here, we actually have digital R signals as well. So we can do spy bus, I squared C and uh, UART as well. And you can do those at the same time as doing all the other stuff as well. So having a four channels, really pretty schmick. So the modulation stuff, for example, is very advanced. The, uh, as I said, the quadrature amplitude modulation here, it can uh, go up to 256 symbols here. Um, unfortunately, the, uh, the bit rate here is only a maximum of uh, two megabits uh, per second. Whereas the uh, Siglent, I believe, can go up to like 37 megabits uh, per second. So there's a big difference there. That makes no difference if you're doing uh, 256 bit or whatever. So nice little uh, IQ uh, display map here. Unfortunately, 
please correct me, Unity, in the comments down below or somebody else. I can't find a way to actually get the independent I and Q signals out like you can do on the uh, Siglent Function Gen. But Siglent, for the IQ feature, they actually charge you 675 bucks US extra. So that's a bit of a bummer. Whereas, you know, this one's built in. But at least they have that ability. As far as I know, this Unity doesn't have it, or at least I haven't found it yet and I can't find it in the manual. So, uh, so that's a bit disappointing. Uh, with all this advanced capability, I would have liked to have seen that feature. In the channel utility menu here, we've got a, a nice little uh, convenient overview of all the channels currently set. And then you can set the uh, coupling modes as well. And you've got a nice merge feature with a nice diagrammatic display here uh, to show you how you can actually uh, merge uh, channel one and channel two signals onto the various outputs. So. That's pretty cool. So let's say, for example, we were generating just an amplitude modulated uh, sine wave on uh, channel one here, and you can see that up there, nice. And we wanted to mix that with a signal on channel two, which is a uh, four symbol uh, quadrature amplitude modulation here at 100 bits per second rate here. Well, we can go into the utility menu here, and then we can flip merge there, and boom. There's our little wiggly wiggle yeah symbol. So we can just switch that off or on using that merge function. Very nice. And you can see it's got a built-in uh, frequency counter up here, which displays on the top. I'm just feeding it up its own clacker here. Um, so it's measuring its own 10 megahertz reference. But if you go over to the utility menu here, you can see you get all the statistical info uh, for that. Updates about once a second here uh, for that. Apparently it'll go up to about 800 megahertz maximum with the uh, external counter input, but I'm not going to test that. Now, of course, I can't do this without mentioning it of how this thing looks. I know looks isn't that important. It's how it performs. Performance, but when you're paying six thousand dollars for a function generator, I want it to look like a professional bit of kit, like this over here, for example. I just, you know, want it to look nice. But the vibe of this thing is just not a six thousand dollar function gen. But I know that's you know not important to some people, but to me, I think Unity should just hire an industrial designer who knows about good professional looks and functionality. I mean, it's not crazy like, you know, Rigol used to have like five different fonts on their front panel or something like that. But yeah, it just doesn't ooze like I'm looking at a $6,000 function generator. That's all. That's all I'm saying. Now, I've got high CRI color matched lights in my uh, lab here, so and my uh, camera is color balanced. So what you're seeing is accurate colors here. And you'll notice that, you know, the red kind of matches there, but this, like, that's like an aqua turquoisey type thing. It's not blue, like here. Channel 3, okay, that's more orange than yellowish, but okay, fair enough. But channel 4 is like purple. Um, is it purple? But can you tell the difference between those two colors? Why use, that's more like a pinky type color than a purple? Like, why have it so close? Uh, I don't get it. And I must say, I'm not a fan of how the buttons light up here. You can barely see them. I mean, I can turn my side studio lights off here and it's eh, it's a bit how you're doing. But anyway, but I must say, I do actually like uh, the user interface, how it operates. The screen is big, massive, uh, you know, 10 inch capacitive uh, touch jobby. It's really nice. It's really, you know, it's quite well laid out. I really like how, you know, uh, just the one, two, three, four across here like this is nice. And then we've got uh, help building in here continue it should be continuous <laughs> continue work mode i don't know spot any uh, potential spelling mistakes in there but anyway um yeah built in help and if you hit the home button over here you actually get uh, all four uh, channels at the uh, same time on the screen so that's really quite handy i like the grouping of the uh, controls here with the uh, waveforms uh the functions up here you've got uh, continuous wave modulation sweep and uh, burst although you can do all this on the uh, touchy uh, feely screen here and i really like uh you know the keypad interface we can set that to five megahertz for example looks really nice and a nice little touch if we go in there like that okay and we move the cursor across you can see it moving over like that okay and so it's over on the third digit if i go out then go over to here and then take that to say the second digit here it when i go back to there it remembers where the cursor was so that's just really nice. Somebody was thinking when they implemented that. Thumbs up. And I understand all the functions here. One I don't get though is WARB. Uh, we've already got ARB up here. What's WARB? Windowed ARB? 
I don't know. Couldn't find it in the manual. And if I press it, function not available. Mm -hmm. And on the back, of course, you'd expect an external uh, frequency reference uh, input, clock reference input. Uh, I think it's half a PPM uh, stability with the internal uh, one. Anyway, you can get uh, the external reference out, uh, which of course is handy for synchronization. Then frequency counter input, uh, frequency shift key in uh, triggering input, and also external modulation not that you'd probably ever need that because it's already got such advanced uh, modulation capability built in. But anyway, um, USB and uh, the Ethernets as well. So I connected up the LAN, it gives me a uh, local IP address, but I don't get anything. So there's no uh, web-based uh, user interface, so I don't know what software comes with it. Not going to try that in this video, sorry.